Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Professor Asif Qureshi and you are watching Dr. Asif Lectures. Welcome to another video on the renal system. We are studying the renal module and today's topic is to understand the structure of glomerulus. Okay, so glomerulus is basically this tuft of capillaries which is sitting around in the uh, Bowman's capsule. But it is important to understand the overall picture. You see, this glomerulus is the capillary tuft but what is giving rise to this capillary tuft is the afferent arteriole and it, it leads back to the renal artery. So we need to understand that what are the different segmental supply of the kidney and what are the different branches of the renal artery. So the story begins here, renal artery enters into the hilum of the kidney and as you can see these red branches, this renal artery divides into a lot of different branches. The first set of branch that arise from the renal artery are called the segmental artery. Okay, from these are the segmental arteries and from the segmental arteries arise is the interlobar arteries which then give rise to arcuate arteries which are these horizontal arteries over the uh, you know pyramidal surface and from the arcuate arteries arise these short branches which enter into the cortex and they are called the interlobular arteries. Now if you take an interlobular artery and maximize the size so the interlobular artery is giving rise to the afferent arteriole okay this afferent arteriole is then giving rise to a lot of capillaries which are called the glomerular capillaries which then finally again merge into efferent arteriole so here's the story renal artery enters into the kidney divides into segmental artery then interlobar artery then arcuate artery then interlobular artery and interlobular artery gives rise to afferent arteriole two capillaries and again arteriole. Now this is an unusual system because usually if there is an artery at one end and capillaries in the middle then there is a vein at the other end but here you see there is a friend arteriole on one side of these capillaries and another arteriole on the other side of these capillaries so because there are two arteriolar blood vessels on both the sides of these capillaries these capillaries which we call the glomerulus is a very high pressure capillary system and imagine this high pressure is important because filtration will take place like this okay so for filtration to happen high pressure is the requirement and nature has given you this high pressure by having two arterioles on both the sides of these glomerulus okay now the afferent arteriole which comes out again divides into a lot of capillaries and these are called peritubular capillaries and these peritubular capillaries as you can see surround the whole nephron the proximal convoluted tubule the loop of Hanley, the distal convoluted tubule everything and all these capillaries then merge into finally interlobular vein to arcuate vein to interlobar vein and to renal vein. So this is the reverse order of how we named the arteries. So the arteries were renal artery, segmental artery, interlobar artery, arcuate artery and interlobular artery. And the reverse supply for the vein is interlobular to arcuate to interlobar to renal vein. And renal vein then carries this blood away from the kidney towards the heart. So this is the basic structural organization that you must understand that from where is the glomerulus coming up. So this here is the glomerulus and this glomerulus has its blood supply from the renal artery and it's ultimately draining into the renal vein and once you understand this whole picture this becomes now very easy to understand the specific structures present within the glomerulus so let's proceed for this so here is the cartoon representation maximized zoomed in into the glomerular structure okay now in order to orient yourself re rememorize remind yourself that this was the afferent arteriole and from where was it coming the afferent arteriole was coming from the interlobular artery okay so afferent arteriole is bringing blood towards the glomerulus and once this arteriole comes in here it divides into a lot of capillaries and these capillaries is what we call the glomerulus okay and they emerge out as efferent arteriole so efferent arteriole is something from where the blood will leave the glomerulus okay so blood enters in here 
and blood leaves from here. So afferent arteriole and then efferent arteriole. Now there are so many structures that we need to understand and master. Each single word written on this image here should make sense to you, should be very clear to you. So let's just start discussion on each and every single structure. So this is the arteriole and obviously you know that the arteriole is lined up by these cells. You see these cells, this is a cell here this is a cell here, this is a cell here, and these are all the cells. This is a cell here. So these cells are the endothelial cells. And these endothelial cells are lining the blood vessel, the arteriole, as well as the glomerular capillaries, okay? And these cells are basically fenestrated. They have a lot of holes within them, okay? So there are small holes. And these holes are important because from these holes, the process of filtration will take place. So one structure that you need to understand is these endothelial cells. Endothelial cells. So this is done. Endothelial cells are lining the blood vessels, okay? So you should understand this. Let us look at some other structure. Now, if these are the endothelial cells and you look immediately outside the endothelial cells, you see this line. Follow this black line. You see? You see this line. And this line is going all the way, all the way around the blood vessels. And this line is known as the basement membrane. So there is a basement membrane, okay? So that's the basement membrane. On other side of the basement membrane are these cells, the green colored cells, and these cells are called visceral layer of the Bauman's capsule, or they are also simply called the podocytes, okay? So these three structures, the endothelial cells, which are lining the blood vessels, then the podocytes, which are on the other side of the basement membrane, and the basement membrane itself. You notice a star is there. On all of them, there is a star made up there. This means that they are part of the... Uh, filtration barrier. So anything which has to go from the blood into the Bauman's space will have to pass through these three things. And what are these three things? The th three things are endothelial cells and the basement membrane and the podocytes. Okay. Now what else is present there? You see these green cells are called the podocytes but then there are also these cells which are lining the Bauman's capsule. These are called the parietal layer of the Bauman's capsule and the space between them is known as the Bauman's space. So this space here is called the Bauman space. So whatever is filtered from the blood enters here and then go into the proximal convoluted tubule, okay? So up till now, we have understood what are endothelial cells, what is the basement membrane, what are podocytes, and what is the parietal layer, okay? Now let us discuss some other very important structures in the glomerular anatomy. Now you see these blue cells which are interspersed between the glomerular capillaries. These are called the mesangial cells, okay? And they're very important cells. We, uh, we will discuss their importance when we talk about uh, renal physiology and pathology, okay? So these mesangial cells are interspersed between the glomerular capillaries and you also see these modified cells shown in a different color. They are called the JG cells, juxtaglomerular, very important cell because when we talk about the renin-angiotensin system, you will come to realize the importance of these cells. And you see, these cells are very important in terms of their, you know, geography as well. They are very close, actually uh, modified epithelial endothelial cells. They're very close to the afferent arteriole. Here is the afferent arteriole. And they are also in very close proximity of the distal convoluted tubule. You imagine this, you see? You imagine this is, this is a section through the distal convoluted tubule. So if we talk about the whole nephron, the whole nephron at the end, the distal convoluted tubule, they loop towards the afferent arteriole and this complete apparatus is basically called the uh, the JG apparatus which is very important for regulation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system which we will discuss in another video but just look at the anatomy the juxtra glomerular cells are in close proximity to the afferent arteriole and to the distal convoluted tubule and there are specialized cells in this part of the distal convoluted tubule which are called macular densa okay so i think we have highlighted each and every single structure present on this diagram 
because it's important for you to understand. So whenever in glomerulus we talk about what is endothelial cell, it should be clear in your mind that we are talking about the blood vessel lining. When we talk about the basement membrane, you should be clear that the basement membrane is in between the podocytes, which are green in color here, and the endothelial cells. If somebody asks you what is the podocyte, it's these green cells, the visceral layer of the Bauman capsule, and these are the parietal cells, and you should know what is the Bauman space, here is the Bauman space, and you should also know what is the filtration barrier, the glomerular filtration barrier is composed of three things. First is the endothelial cell, second is the basement membrane, and third is the podocyte. So, so I really hope that you have mastered all these various structures present in the glomerulus, okay? If you like the video, please subscribe the channel and share the video, and I will see you with another video in renal module discussing more about renal physiology and pathology. Till then, take care of yourself, and I'll see you very soon.